one. Hey everyone. So today I would like to go over the ClearPath servo motors. And these servo motors in particular are from ClearPath. They are the NEMA 34s. Uh, the, basically the highest torque in the smallest size that they had. I'll put a link to the product in the description below. But I want to go ahead and talk about stops, uh, particularly homing the machine when it turns on and getting some reliable zero point. So when I click the machine on, everything is in zero. So yeah, let's get started. First, what we need to do is hook up the USB cable to one of the servo motors. When you hook up the servo motor for the first time, it will ask you to go ahead and uh, tune the motor. We're going to go ahead and skip that though today because we already did that. And I'm going to click this. I have already run auto tune or loaded a tune configuration for this motor. So I'm going to hit next. And my machine uh, motor, this is using the ClearPath MSP. And so on this screen, what we're going to do is what I already did. And I went ahead and enabled the homing function. The homing function is pretty cool because it has a few items in here that you can set up based on your machine. Uh, for my machine, I went ahead and set up the normal mode for homing. The homing style, I went ahead and set it to clear path homes automatically. The reason why I did this is because it's easier for me right now. I haven't really set these motors up. I've tried to set them up as a limit stop. That unfortunately failed. So there is this option that says user seeks home clear path AGS signal when homing is complete. I kind of want to figure out how to make that work, but unfortunately I don't know how to make that work in Mach 3. So if anyone has any suggestions, please, you know, go ahead and include it. I'm going to look more into it and maybe talk to the clear path guys and see if we can't figure out that setting. Next is the homing and when it occurs. I'm going to go ahead and set this to upon first enable at power up. You do have the option to do upon every enable, but I don't see a use case for that right now. I think with me opening and closing mock as many times as I do, it's, uh, yeah, it would be a little daunting. For this motor, it's hooked up to the Z-axis, so I went ahead and set that to the counterclockwise. I know that counterclockwise goes in the up direction. And I've just kept the default speeds, 40 RPM, and a 5,000 acceleration deceleration on the, on the uh, RPMs. Physical home clearance. This is how much, when it hits the stop, how much you want it to back off. I just kept it at 800 counts. It looks like it's a quarter inch on the machine, which plenty for what I'm looking for. And the homing torque limits, you can definitely set that up. Uh, I just kept it at 60. It's a percentage, so I just kept that at 60%, which was the default. This uh, used precision homing will be automatically selected, and then calibration will say you have to calibrate first. When you want to calibrate the machine, we'll go ahead and try that real quick just to double check. But I'll go here and clear and press OK. So now when you set up your motor for the first time, it'll say calibration pending. So you go ahead and click OK, and what it's going to do is actually start moving or it should start moving the machine. So we'll click that and nothing happened. So I'm gonna stop the machine. We're gonna try to power cycle right now. What the power cycle is gonna do is gonna start the homing and starting to actually calibrate that axis. So give me one second and I will go turn the power on. Okay, I just went ahead and cycled the power. As you can see what's happening right now is the axis is Moving to the stop, in this case, the stop is the physical ball screw in the back of the head. Down here as well, these axes are moving into their home position since I already set them to home. So you can see it touched off, touches off, and then backs off itself. The system has automatically said, hey, I redetected your item, and you'll see now it's going to Oh, that screen just popped off, but 
it was saying it was setting the home position. What that was doing on your first initial setup of this, it will, uh, it will auto find the home position. So make sure that you have your machine all set up. As you can see now, it's off of the, you know, hard stop on the top. And so all of my axes now are flashing green and zeroed out in the right direction. So next, what we're going to do is close out of here. And I'm going to go into the Mach 3. Now, Mach 3 is very interesting. When you start it up for the first time, what it likes to do is remember its old position that it was in. But also, it kind of clears some items in here. So my machine, the last time I ran it, I stopped it at zero. So I'm going to go here to diagnostics and just verify that my current position and my machine coordinates are all zeroed out. My work offsets, which is my G54, I'm going to have to go back in and actually physically set that. So we'll go back here to program run. We'll hit reset. And what I want to do is click reference all to home. That sets all of my green zeros. That means now I'm working within G54 and I'm not looking at machine coordinates. If I click machine coordinates, it'll tell me what my machine coordinates are. One thing to note too is I did pre-set up my soft limits. To set up your soft limits, you go into config and you come down here to homing and limits and your soft limits will pop up here. Just note that your soft max and your soft mins, uh, they do have to be, your min will have to be negative numbers or zero and your soft max is, is anything positive. If you flip-flopped it, uh, Mach will actually tell you it's wrong. So just to have FYI on that one. Go ahead here and click OK. And let's jog the machine. And you can see here, the soft limits, what it's going to do is slow the machine down before it actually runs into the side. So that's how I set up my auto homing and limits. Uh, when I do start up mock for the first time, every time, I'm just going to have to make sure that I reference all to home and zero out everything and double check my diagnostics page that the work offsets and everything is set all to zero. Like I said, I'd like to have a button that I could just click to go home and actually do a homing cycle. I know there's a G button for that, but at this point in time, I haven't set that up yet. So let's go ahead real quick while I have your attention and let's set a work offset and see how that works. So I'm gonna go and just move all my axis. And I'll show you what I'm talking about when you restart mock, what to expect. So all of my items have been set. These are now my new coordinates that I wanna set X, Y, and Z. So I'm gonna just click X, Y, and Z. And now my G54 is gonna be set to zero. I can confirm that in the diagnostic section. And you'll see my work offsets are entered right here. And my current position now is zero. And those work offsets match the machine coordinates. Here's the problem though with mock. When you turn it off in this state, I've saved everything and everything is fine. When I go ahead and shut down mock, I'm actually going to save the fixture. The machine was shut down in this mode. And what I'm going to do is power cycle real quick. So bear with me for one second. So I went ahead and power cycled the machine. You can see that now it's moving to those home positions. While it's doing that though, my computer is set up for when I start it up. When I flip the power switch for the whole machine, it's gonna auto load mock. So what I wanna do is show you what happens when you're loading mock and it's within the middle of the homing positions. So you can see that the amber light is now on. The machine has not homed. There's a, a large gap there. And if that ever happens, you can go ahead and just click the reset button. 
And what that does is it continues the homing cycle for the machine. So you can see the z-axis is moving up and the x-axis is actually still confirming its home position. The y-axis is complete. So we'll give that a second and I'll show you what steps to take next. Okay, so the machine has actually homed itself. I know this is my zero, zero, and zero on the axis. If I go ahead and move any of my axes at this moment without referencing all the home, what's gonna happen is it's gonna remember all of these items. So for simplistic reasons, I'm gonna go into the diagnostic page and just show you also. It saved my work offsets. My machine coordinates are now reading zero, but here's my problem. My current position is saying that it's got these numbers. So the machine thinks that it's at this location, which we know is not true. So we're gonna go ahead and hit reference, X, Y, and Z, and we're gonna zero all of those out. And what that did was that actually deleted my work offsets. So if I go back to program run, you'll see everything has been referenced to home, X, Y, and Z are all zero, and everything's set back up. So I wanna do one more test though, and mess up all these coordinates and try to just do it all from this screen instead of going into the diagnostics. So let me power cycle one more time and show you what happens. Okay, so I went ahead and power cycled. It went back through the homing cycle and I'm gonna go back into mock. Now, I did say save fixture, but I guess something remembered that I was still at zero. Go ahead and click reset. And it looks like everything is back to zero. So one of my things would be is just to double check where your coordinates are before and when you start up mock for the first time. Again, I'm gonna reference everything back to home. Double check my machine coordinates are zero. Go back into diagnostics. Everything has been, my work offsets have been reset, my machine coordinates, everything is back to zero. So now I can go ahead, ensure my soft limits is still green, which it is. And I can make sure that everything is still running the way that it's supposed to. And the soft limits are fully functional. So that's how I set up my machine. I wanna start all my stuff from this upper left corner, or I guess from the table limits of where the upper left corner could be, which is about right here on the machine compared to the spindle. And yeah, that's how I wanna set up my machine for future uh, refinding the home and then being able to touch off my part with the touch probe. And yeah, so watch the other video on how the touch probe works and hopefully then you can get some repeatability in finding your work and uh, what I can do is another video in the future if people want to see it, uh, what type of reliability or repeatability I'm getting from this homing method. I do want to be able to just say on mock, go ahead and go to home and see what happens there. But I have seen a lot of issues where people, you know, set their machines up different styles than this one. And they do say that sometimes the hard stop, unless you... If some people have like maybe a rubber piece that might not be repeatable uh, because this is all metal. I'm not too concerned about it uh, not being repeatable. All right. Well, again, thanks for watching and hopefully you've learned something today. This is my current setup for the ClearPath uh, servo motors and hopefully you found that interesting. Any comments, questions, leave it in the description or comment section below and all the products that you see here today will be left in the video description and please like subscribe and share this helps support the channel thanks for watching